Hi there and welcome to this installment of a series of online videos covering successful interviewing. On this video we're going to focus in on behavioral based interview questions. My name is Michael Miller. As a reminder these uh, videos are all brought to you by the websites SoaringCareer.com and SoaringMe.com. Now behavioral based interviews you might also be heard or referred to as situational based interviews or uh, performance based interviews or interview questions. Basically these are all off of the premise that we can take a prediction of your future behavior by taking a close look at your past behavior in certain situations. So if you've interviewed it all out there recently you have uh, likely run across some of these questions. You might have heard uh, something along the lines of Give me an example of a time you had to deal with an irate customer or tell me about a time you had to deal with a coworker that wasn't pulling their own weight and what did you do about it? These tell me about a time or give me an example type of questions are all behavioral based interview questions and there is a correct form of answering that. So I'm going to give you that. I'm also going to give you the typical pitfalls that people that I've interviewed run into and then I've got an exercise for you to avoid those pitfalls and come off with a strong answer. So let's talk about the format. Number one, I'm looking for a specific example out of your past. Now you might not have a lot of work experience and so using an example off of a sports team or from school or a study group, summer job, volunteer work, all of that's fine because I'm trying to uncover a skill that you have. Doesn't mean that you have to have 10, 15 years industry experience in order to answer these. So a uh, basically success story taking me through what you did in that example. Now let me quickly cover the biggest pitfalls. It's important to avoid. Number one pitfall is being vague. I ask you, tell me about a time where you had to deal with an irate customer. And your answer is something along the lines of, well that happens all the time and generally I try to, okay, that is not specific. That is not a particular event where you can tell me what happened, okay? So when somebody gives me an answer like that, I might give them one redirect. Well, can you think of a specific time that that happened? Fo some follow-up question like that. And a lot of times they still will be vague. Now I'm thinking as the person interviewing you, you just don't maybe understand my question or you're trying to BS. I, I, I don't know, but you're not giving me what I want. It's not a strong answer and frankly you're going to lose out to your competition on this job. So number two pitfall to avoid is an over exaggerated pause because you aren't prepared and you haven't thought about that specific uh, irate customer in a long time. You might sit there and stare off into space and I can hear the clock ticking while I'm waiting for you to recall all of the details. Again not strong, doesn't make the greatest impression, and you're digging yourself a hole. You might be able to recover, but somebody else might uh, beat you out because they were more prepared. Now the third and maybe most tragic pitfall you need to avoid in behavioral based interview questions is me completing all of my questions, you heading to your car, you're in the parking lot, and oh! You just remembered a fantastic example that you should have given me, but I'm in there making decisions on who's moving forward, and I have no idea that you have this great example. I'm never going to hear it. So what I'm going to do is give you basically a little bit of homework to prepare yourself prior to any of your interviews in case you run into behavioral based interview questions. Now if you Google behavioral based or situational based interview questions you'll typically get the acronym STAR S -T -A -R, as the best 
method to answer behavioral based interview questions and for the most part I, uh, I agree with that. STAR stands for situation, task, uh, uh, action, and results. I take out the T, the task. I think a uh, little homework assignment where you take a blank piece of paper and you turn it so it's horizontal, draw yourself two lines here so you've got three columns is probably the best way I've seen any candidate prepare for a behavioral based interview question. Now, all you're going to do is put some bullet points. You're going to take a little bit of time and refresh your memory on some of the best accomplishments, best success stories you've ever had in your career, whether it be a professional career, academic career, or what have you. You're going to put the situation or the problem that you dealt with here in this column. It could be as the earlier example, you were working at a hotel. You had a family in from out of town and they had been double charged for the hotel. They tried calling the 800 number, got no satisfaction, really um, irate at the front desk and yelling at me. I'm not going to write out all of that, but I'll put the bullet point irate customer at the hotel. Because all I'm doing is organizing my thoughts. I don't need to have it verbatim, but this is refreshing my memory. In the middle column, my actions. First off, I calmed the wife down, who was the one that was most upset. I took responsibility, told her I would personally research it and get back to her by the end of the day. I did extra research. The customer service person at 800 number must not have gone in the extra step into another database. I found where the uh, extra charge was. I took all of that to my manager. I also persuaded her that we should comp dinner for the family. We got the charge reversed. All of that goes in my actions. Bullet points. Three bullet points. I took responsibility. I did the research. I got the things reversed. Here's the key in your success story. It's not much of a success and it's not going to impress me if I'm interviewing you if you tell me, I remember a specific time I had an irate customer. I turned it over to my manager and they fixed it. Or I took these steps and it didn't have any effect. It's got to have all three. You have to be the star of the story and the results show the value you would bring to my company as I'm interviewing you. So the results were the customer was very happy. In fact, they wrote a letter to the corporate office telling them that before I fix this, they were never going to return again and they were going to go online and write some pretty poor reviews. But as a result of my efforts, they're going to remain lifelong customers. Whatever the results are, if you're in sales, I'd be as specific as possible. I increase sales by 40%. If you're in healthcare, maybe you're a physical therapist, I increase the patient's mobility by 40%. Whatever it is that pertains to your field, refresh your memory organize all of your thoughts, get all of your best, and I would rank them, you know, my best success story, I'm not leaving the interview without throwing this one in, and, and rank them. And then I'd take a look at the job ad. I'd anticipate some of the things that because this job would deal with it, the interviewer is likely going to ask me a, a situation that is similar to that, and I'd put that on there. All you're trying to do is have a mental database, so to speak, of your success stories. So when I ask you the question in the interview, you can think for a minute which one applies to the question I'm asking you. Go into the details. The more details you give, the less I'm going to question it. If you're vague or sort of halfway in between, you don't give the results very much, as an interviewer, I'm going to dig deeper. So you come across stronger and the interview will go smoother if you get specific and can go into that example. Other than that, I would suggest that you practice. Again, not word for word, but be organized in your thoughts so you can beat your competition, come across confidently and with a strong answer. Good luck in your interviews and please remember to share this, all of the videos and our websites with your colleagues.